Hey guys, welcome back to Creators Chat Q&A. Uh, this question comes from a professional artist of four years who has found that he's struggling getting interesting dynamic composition. So he's told us that he is, oh, it is a he, isn't it? Mm -hmm. oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm just assuming. Okay, well, we'll say, we'll say he, she, they, we'll, we'll switch it up, all of the above. Um, has been struggling, um, they have been studying, they've been um, looking at masters, they've been reading about composition, but they feel that they are just trapped in this kind of, um, this kind of static, they're really just struggling to get their compositions looking good. Um, and they, they don't know how they would proceed and are asking us how we would. Um, for me, actually, this sounds um, almost like, almost like too much pressure on yourself. Um, it is likely that you are studying really, really hard for something that is quite murky and difficult to pinpoint. Um, the master's certainly nailed composition, but if it's not speaking to you, if you're not gaining from that, it's likely that you are probably enjoying something different that you're not gaining from these sources that you're studying. Uh, this is, this is, you might have a very different answer here. I'm just going to roll with this and then you can kind yeah, of chime in with yours. Um, so I found that, um, cause composition is such a murky thing to understand. There is no textbook that definitively tells you exactly what good composition is and what bad composition is. There's lots of opinions on that, but it's murky. Um, if you were really feeling that your work is static and boring compared to other artworks, I'd say look more into what it is that you like about other people's compositions and really try to find the differences between yours and theirs. There could just be a chance that your personal taste is very different, that you're kind of listening to a lot of people saying that, um, you know, this is good composition and you're kind of looking at it and you're going, okay, I guess if you're saying it's good composition and you're studying it and you're not feeling it in your own work, I would say it sounds to me like you are kind of taking it on face value, what everyone else is saying about good composition and you're just not feeling it yourself. And that perhaps you need to kind of go looking for what feels like good composition to you and probably comparing your work to that and seeing how that measures up. I know I've certainly suffered a lot for listening to other people say that this is what is good and me in my heart being like, well, I understand that, but I don't like it. And then making myself miserable by producing work that fits that definition of good but doesn't make me happy. Mm. Um, so like doing master studies and stuff, I always ran into the problem that I know it's good work, but quite honestly, there are very few masters that I like the work of. I know it's good work, but I don't like it. Mm. I wouldn't hang it in my room. I wouldn't look at it for hours. Um, and then I kind of realized that there is sometimes just a difference between what actually feels good when you're making it and what is textbook good. Um, and that is usually something you should listen to and not quiet because that's where my voice has come from is from understanding there was a reason why I wasn't enjoying it and kind of looking for ways to do what I enjoy more. That's kind of where my voice has come out. Um, so it sounds to me like almost in some ways you may be studying too hard or at least taking this kind of face value definition of what is good and not understanding what it is that feels good to you. Noah, you probably have a much more academic answer than that, <laughs> go for it. I, I don't know if I'm going to ever tell people they're studying too much. No, you probably uh, won't. <laughs> I, I probably won't, especially when it comes to master's studies. Yes. Um, so my thoughts are kind of weird on composition in that I definitely agree with you. There's, there's no good books out there. Uh, I've read all the books on composition. They're not that great. Uh, <laughs> there's a few that are pretty good. And the one that I often tell people is How Pictures Work. That's a good book. And it's a very, very good book. It's by Molly Bang, and it's phenomenally good. And she goes through and actually shows you, here's how when you change an image, it changes how you feel about the image. And that's kind of a crucial thing is how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. uh, composition is a very emotional process. It's not a technical process. There's a lot of technical aspects to art that you need to learn. When you're mm -hmm. learning linear perspective, you need to measure stuff and you need to get straight lines in there. Yeah. When you're dealing with composition, you don't need to make grids. You don't need to make stupid golden ratio. <laughs> uh, if anyone ever says, you should use the golden spiral, you should just, yes, you should punch them. <laughs> Wait, no, don't punch people. Definitely punch <laughs> them. Metaphorical punch them. And maybe physically punch them. <laughs> it's nonsense. Think about it. It's complete nonsense. None of it's real. If anyone says otherwise, they're an idiot. I saw a great meme once that just had the golden uh, spiral just like overlaid over stupid images and yeah. it just like fit every single time. Yeah. It's amazing what you can make fit when you change everything about it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is idiotic. <laughs> so the, the idea of composition is more what feels right to you. 
And that's going to be different based on different people. Uh, my sense of composition is entirely different from your sense of composition, and that's fine. You don't have to have some universal sense of composition. Like, for instance, the whole rule of third stuff. If you don't put something on the you know, third point, that's fine. Yeah. You can put it super far off to the right. You can put it smack dab in the middle, which is not the rule of thirds. And it can look great. And so the fact that there's so many things that break these rules shows that the rules aren't really rules. The rules are idiotic. So do whatever makes you feel good. Now, you specifically asked about dynamic compositions. Now, that's a different story because what makes you feel comfortable and what makes you feel stimulated is two entirely different things. And so if you go for a very formal, quiet composition, you're not going to have a dynamic composition, but it's still going to be a good one. So there's some... There's something to be said for figuring out what you want out of the composition. What do you want the composition itself to do? And that's where a book like um, How Pictures Work really comes in handy. Because that's all about how is this making me feel? How are these shapes making me feel? And I think that's the real clincher there. Is that if you want dynamic stuff, look at other dynamic pictures, break them down into shapes, and see if just those shapes are interesting and dynamic and movement filled uh, as they are without any sort of context. Now, the other thing I wanna say is that a large part of composition is actually what you're painting. Uh, it's hugely important. Uh, Jim Gurney talks about this stuff all the time. And if you haven't ever read his books or checked out his blog or anything like that, checked out his videos, go ahead and do that because he is phenomenally good at teaching this stuff and actually breaking a lot of the stupid myths out there. Uh, and one of the big things that he's talked about is eye tracking studies. So and just quickly interject, did you call him Jim Gurney? Yeah. Most people see him as James Gurney. James right? Gurney. <laughs> he goes by Jim. Uh, but yes, Don't James Gurney. Jim. <laughs> James I mean, Gurney. you'd probably find him if you look at Jim yeah. Gurney. Uh, but yes, James Gurney. And um, what was I saying? Uh, you interrupted his, me, so you gotta find him. The find him. There you go, eye tracking. <laughs> uh, so his whole thing was eye tracking. And if you put something low contrast in the corner of a painting and not on the rule of thirds, do you think anyone's going to look at it? Well, as it turns out, yes, oh. if it's a face, uh, because yes. we like looking at faces. Yeah. So it doesn't matter any of these other rules. It doesn't matter if it's on this stupid golden spiral. It all that matters is that it's a face. Yeah, people oh my God, I'm going to look at the face. The face. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you put it. You're going to look at the face. Uh, if there's multiple faces, you're going to look at like the clearest one. That's, that's obvious. You're just, you're going to pick something out. Uh, if it's just a portrait, you're going to go straight to the eye. You're not going to look at their ear. Do you, does anyone ever first go to the ear? They're like, whoa, you know, not going to happen. So like there's some basic fundamental stuff about how a composition works that we like looking at certain things, like things, not shapes, things. We actually like looking at the things. You, we don't really notice the other stuff. And I think all that stuff is really, really important. Um, and far too often neglected. Yeah, that's very true. So, so yeah, I hope there's a good, good few resources yeah. there that you can be diving into and just, yeah. I think, accept what it is that you like about other people's work and figure out what it is that differs from yours. Yeah. Um, there's a yeah. way to tackle that. It doesn't have to be so scary and mystical as it seems. It's not. It's, it's mostly fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank All right, you. See ya.